Hi everyone, this is me, Mark Alessi, and I'm going to do ET103 Anunnaki's The Current Day Politics. Now, I know when everyone thinks of the Anunnaki's, they usually think of the ancient history that was part of Earth. But right now, we're all kind of going through our evolution, where all planets and all ETs are kind of interdimensional beings are kind of going to this evolution process with us as humans on this planet and so forth. We're all doing this together. So I thought it was kind of important and really good that we kind of went over the current day politics with Anunnaki's. Therefore, we can kind of have a more understanding of what's going on with them and they can have an understanding of what's going on so we can all kind of be on the same page. So let me go ahead and tell you what Anunnaki means. Anu was the being of the Anunnaki's and he was the, kind of the head of the Anunnaki's. So when you had the Anunnaki's, basically it just meant being sent down from Anu. Now, when people think of Anunnaki's, it's kind of a coalition of a lot of different types of races. So when you think of the United States, you think of the United States, which is America, but in every, you know, we have United States as a coalition of different types of people, all different types of mixtures, and basically that's kind of what the Anunnaki's are. There are all different types of types of beings, but for the most part, the majority of them were kind of half draconians, half Syrians. And so when you think of them, you can kind of think in a, think of them of having half of the advanced technology that the Naturus and Syrians have, so they're very advanced technology-wise, um, and they have half of the bi-strengths of the draconians. The draconians are very, very powerful. However, they only have half of that strength. So what happened with the Anunnaki's, you know, they they usually have a war amongst themselves, which is Anil, who's more the brother of Inki, who are both the sons of Anu. Where Anil was more into technology, where Inki was more into spirituality. So they usually have a lot of conflict with each other. But in regards to the Anunnaki Empire, it was very massive. They had um, they set up shop in such a particular in the Ryans, the Syrian constellation. The Taurus constellation, they set it up all over the place. However, a lot of times, like I said, they would always have like this conflict between the, the two parties in Anunnaki's. And so what happened was um, the o Orion, I mean, the Syrian constellations kind of did not really like this. The Syrians did not like this in the new truths. Not only did they not like, th like that, they also did not like that a lot, some of the Anunnaki's would impersonate some of the Naturus and go into lower dimensions and would speak on their behalf. And because Naturus were a little bit more, a lot more elevated, and they were the ancients, they kind of don't like people talking on their behalf because they're supposed to be neutral. So when it comes to lower dimensions, they don't like interfering, they want to be neutral. So because a lot of the Anunnaki's were doing this, it, it kind of made a big disagreement between some of the ancients and some of the Anunnaki's. Eventually, this led to a lot of them kind of being deported from, Syria, from the Sirius constellation and they told me, you guys have to go. You guys are not only you rise this war, causing too much conflict, but then now we don't like your impersonation of our gods. So what happened was there was a scientist on the wing of Inkies named um, Sang Kang Gengol. I know I'm saying it wrong, but there's a scientist who decided that he was going to make these ships. And he was going to make these ships that were so big and massive that a lot of Anunnaki's can live it because the ship was basically big as like a planet. So if you imagine like a ship as big as planet Earth, that's how the ships were. Now, as you can imagine, because a ship was as big as a planet, they really couldn't fly it because if they fly it over in between the solar system, it would kind of mess up the gravitational pulls of the planets. So you can imagine them having to stay still. So what would happen was they realized that they had to build their ships as big as a planet and they would have to park it in the outskirts of the universe and keep and stay in isolation where there's no other planet, no other things there, so it wouldn't really mess up. And the Elves group saw this and saw the success of it and they grew, they loved it. They said, well, we need to grow more ships. So eventually what happened was the Anunnaki's had these really massive planetary ships in the outskirts of the universe just parked. And it would just sit there and park there, and a lot of the Anunnaki's lived there. And everything was going fine, but at, for what they realized is when they kind of abandoned a lot of the plans that they, that they originally had, a lot of the rivalries would kind of overtake their territory. And they were still out in the outskirts, but they didn't really notice it until it was kind of too late. So what happened was, that happened, but they also realized an important fact of, of their evolution was, was 
going wrong and that was their they were losing their ability to be immortal so basically they used to be able to live thousands and thousands of years old but they realized that they were kind of living a lot less and what happened is when they used to die they used to be able to keep their memories but they realized that they were losing their ability to keep their memories therefore they were becoming losing losing their mortality so then they realized that there was like they're in this plateau in their evolution that if we all die and we lose our consciousness, what's going to happen with us as a race? And so, and they didn't, and then once they realized that, they realized that the reason this was happening to them is because of the ships that they lived in. Because the ships were, yes, they were our biggest planets, but they weren't natural. They didn't really have any nature energy. They didn't really have any chi. So what happened was because a metal takes away or disrupts your chi, that's what was happening to them. So what happened was they decided that they were in this dilemma with their evolutionary evolutionary as a planet, so or as as a species. So then they had three different types of groups, and therefore they had three different types of solutions. The first one was the Nails group, of course, and he was more scientific, and he said. His wings said, "We're gonna go in, and we're gonna take, go to these evolutionary plants because those are the ones that are evolving. We'll just go in, have babies with these um, evolutionary women." Because realize Earth is an evolutionary planet, but there's many others. So there are some that they said, well, hey, we can just go in there and take the women we want. And then the men, we'll just make them as our soldiers. And therefore, we can have babies and therefore we can survive. Where Inca's group kind of liked the idea, but he said, we're not going to go there by force and we're not going to make the men become soldiers. We'll just kind of go in their society, hang out with the women, hopefully let them like us. And then from there, they can have our babies. And then there was a third group who said, forget that. I don't care. We're just going to do what we want. Survival of the fittest. Oh, well, we're in desperation. We're losing our species. We're just going to team up with the other rogue um, ETs, like the Draconians and the Pleiadians, and just go into the lower dimensions and just do what we need to do. So that started happening. Now, what happened was because they started doing that, the rogue ones without you know, asking for Aaron's approval, they started making the Anunnaki's look bad. So that's where Pashado came in the picture. Now, Pashado is Inky's son, who is the brother to Murdoch. Um, and Bashado came in and said, well, we gotta go ahead and figure out a way that we can go ahead and for one, stop the public relation, the bad public relation that's happening with the rogue, because they're making us look bad. They're going into lower dimensions and they're just doing causing rabbit that people think the iron knockies are bad. So he decided to go to Nutri and says, hey, we got to go in and stop these people from making our names like that. Can you help us? And of course, Nutri says, we're, we're balanced. We don't like to cause havoc. We're neutral. So what happens, they decide to go to a different constellation, the vegan constellation, and make an alliance. They said, we will give you our support as the Anunnaki's. You give us your powers so we can rule with your, with your powers in the lower dimensions to do what we got to do. You help us with our evolution. We help you, and therefore we can... Um, make an alliance. So these vegan constellation gods said, sure. So in our evolutionary plans, we know them as the Maitavitas, or you can also know them as the Tantric goddess or the Kundalini goddesses or the Indian goddesses or the Indi Hindu de deities. So what happens, they gave them their powers and they kind of came down here and contained contain the most, most of the rogue uh, Anunnaki's. And once he contained that, they kind of took the powers that they took from the vegan um, tantric goddesses and went basically overpowered in Neil's group. And that's when you have Pashado was able to make peace within the Anunnaki's by overpowering Neil's wing and then containing the rogue group. So when, because Pashado was do that, he was able to reunite the Anunnaki's as one. Um, and because he was able to do that, he also became the head of the Anunnaki's and therefore you who used to be Anu is now Pashado. And now so now with the alliance with the vegans, the god, tantric goddesses, they have the passion or the kundalini or the passion that they need. Because when they have that passion, they were able they are able to go ahead and regenerate themselves and keep their mortality because they have passion and therefore they can continue to go. So that's what's currently happened, but now and to take it another step further, Pashado is now going to the Natrus, asking them for the alliance and, hey, we got the vegans' alliances, we're with them, you know, we want to make this back in the golden days when everyone was under um, one umbrella, when the um, Syrians was with the vegans and was with the Luciferians and we were all together under, under one umbrella and ruled together. So that's kind of what's happening now. Um, they're deciding between 
um, the Nitru is making alliance with the vegan, uh, the vegan uh, constellation, therefore, um, who's working with the Anunnaki's. But so now you have that, so it looks like everything's going to be working really well. And that's my introduction to modern day politics of the Anunnaki's. If you have any questions or if you'd like to me to go more into what's happening or what happened with the treaties and whatnot, go ahead and um, send me a message, give me a comment. And um, don't forget, everything that's going on with my videos, I basically base it on what you guys want. If you guys want to hear it, I tell you. If you guys want something else, I'll change it. So um, that is my video, and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks.